Good morning. Good morning, Chairperson, my seniors, my colleagues. First of all, thanks to the organizing team, Dr. Kanagwal, sir, for giving this chance to me. And uh, I will try to be in time, otherwise, Dr. Kunal will show me watch. So, so I have been given this topic regarding a new change that occurred recently regarding dealing with the sexual assault survivors. So this has been made mandatory that we have to maintain the confidentiality of such survivors, whether it is under POXO or any other case has been registered related to sexual assault. So in this, I will introduce this topic. I will talk about some landmark cases, law of the land, and views of the Honorable Supreme Court in this topic, and some relevant cases. And of course, how we have changed the working in our hospital to maintain the confidentiality of such survivors. So we all know that in recent past, the incidence of various sexual offenses, they have increased. And this is because of the reporting. It is not that the number have actually increased, but the reporting have increased. And this is because of the awareness amongst the people, because of the better ways of complaining. Or we can say one of the reason is the confidentiality that has been maintained. We have seen that these numbers have increased in the pediatrics group also. So it is not limited to an adult age group, but the number has also including the pediatric age group. So as per the recent report, the minor accounts for about 75% cases as a survivors in UP Chandigarh during a survey of 2020. Now these uh, victims, which are of tender age, they are more vulnerable to suffer from the greater risks they suffer while they are exposed to the trial or the investigation or the examination that is done after this assault. In case of pregnancy to the child, the physical along with the psychological and physiological injury, that is, we all know. Even the male children, they are becoming the victims of such crimes. So all these factors, if we take together, we know that we need to have a greater sensitivity towards such survivors, and especially regarding to the identity that has to be kept confidential. This was also the view of the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Nipun Saxena versus Union of India, where the court said that in police station, as well as in the courts too, the survivor is not given the due sympathy and they are made to feel as such they have done something wrong. So this was a written statement in the judgment. So the minor, as for the court who is subjected to such assault, they are to be protected because adult can survive the embarrassment that they have to face in the society, but the children may not be able to cope with that. In case of minors, the perpetrator can be member of the family. So in those cases, a special precaution has to be taken. And sometimes they try to hush up the cases also. So confidentiality and the privacy of the child should hence be mandatorily respected and protected by all the person dealing with such cases. So one of the landmark cases was Mathura rape case where she was raped in the custody by two constables, Tukaram and Ganpat, in the premises of the police station itself. Session court, however, in that case in 1972, said the police constables, they are not liable, being the sexual intercourse that was consensual. And they made this opinion based upon that there was no injury mark on the body of the survivor and that she was habituated to sexual intercourse. So appeal was made in the high court and the police constable, they were held liable and was given imprisonment of one and five years, which was again turned over by the Supreme Court. And the same 
reason was given that it was a consensual sexual intercourse. There was in the judgment that Mathura had raised no alarm and there was no visible injuries on the body of the victim and thus there was no struggle, there was no rape. The court noted that because she was used to the sex, she might have incited the cop to have intercourse with her. So this out, uh, decision took to the outrage and the protest by the various women organization and this organization, they fought and the forced the government to bring radical changes in the laws related to the sexual offense. And this was in the form of Criminal Law Amendment Act 1983. Subsequent to that, there were a number of changes occurred. A Section 228A was introduced in IPC, in which the identity of the alleged victim of the offense of under 376 and related acts, they cannot be printed or published or made public. Of course, there were certain conditions where the identity can be revealed if it is by the order of the SHO of the police station or the authorization has been taken from the victim or if the victim is dead or of unsound mind and the consent has been taken, authorization has been taken from the next of the kin. Of course, no such authorization shall be given by the next of kin to anybody other than the chairperson or the secretary of any recognized welfare institution. Then section 327.2 of Criminal Procedure Code also said that inquiry into or the trial of the rape cases, same under the section of uh, 376 and uh, of IPC shall be held in camera. So no public, uh, general public will be present in the court. So as far as possible, a woman judge should be presiding the court. And in all these cases, the identity of the victim or uh, the survivors, they should not be made known. For minors, the two acts, they came for the help. One was Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act 2012, and the other one was Juvenile Justice Act 2015. So in POXO, it was made mandatory that the right of privacy and the confidentiality of the child survivor should be respected by every person by all means. So these includes the investigating personnel, the medical personnel examining such minors, and even the judicial uh, person. So through all the stages of judicial process involving the child, the privacy of the child should be maintained. <coughs> In this act, in section 23.2, it prohibits the disclosure of the identity of the child, including any detail of the child which can help in the identification of the child. So that includes the address, school, name, or photograph, or family detail. Similarly, section 24 of the same act requires police officials investigating in the case to ensure that the identity of the child is protected at each level. In the same act, section 33.7 says that the special court should ensure that the identity of such survivor, they should be protected. Only the court can give the permission to reveal their identity, but they have to give the reason in writing. So emergency medical care also has to take care that the identity of such victims or survivors, they are maintained at each level. Similarly, the second act, that is Juvenile Justice Act in 2015, said that in section 74, it prohibits the disclosure of the identity of the child. So this child includes the victim as well as the accused. So no reports in any newspaper or any type of media, they should give the name or the identity of the child. So regarding any inquiry or investigation or judicial procedure, that is carried out, they should not disclose any name as well as any other detail which can lead to the identification of that child. So police shall not disclose the identity if the case is closed or disposed of. So important mandate of these legal provisions is that these prohibitions regarding uh, giving the details leading to the identity of the child cannot be waived. So whether by the child or by the parents. 
So Honorable Supreme Court had a similar view that obviously there should not be any publication of any name of the victim. So they said that any other matter which can make the identity of the victim, which means that any relevant data which can help in the identification of the child. The police officials, they, those are investigating these cases, they should use a pseudonym rather than naming the, the name of the victim in their report, they should use a pseudonym instead of that. So only a session judge or a magistrate can order a copy of such FIR. So as we know that we can get a copy of FIR online, but any such cases which are against uh, where the victim is a minor or related to sexual assault, that FIR cannot be obtained directly from online. So a judge can give up on me. So all this was ruled in the uh, judgment of Nipun Saxena versus Union of India. <clears throat> so, similarly, the court had the view that there are certain situations where there are chances of where the identity of the victim can be disclosed, like where the samples are to be taken from her body, where the medical examination is to be conducted, where the sample has to be sent for DNA profiling, where the date of birth has to be established from the school records. So, these were the certain situations where the court found that identity has to be is closed. So in these cases, the instruction was given to the police officials and other officials dealing with such survivors that disclose as little identity of the victim as possible, but enough to link the victim with the information source. So authority to whom the name of the victim is disclosed has a duty to protect that identity. So if a police official tells a medical officer about the identity of a victim or a survivor, then this duty shifts to the medical officer also. So he has to protect the identity of that victim. Any document that can be scrutinized by a large number of group of people, they should use pseudonym instead of their true name or address. So original documents carrying the name and the identity of the victim uh, can be kept in a sealed cover and you can use a reference number on their reports or the medical records. In adult victim, if the adult victim has no objection, yes, the identity can be revealed, but first an authorization letter has to be taken from that. So it has to be a voluntary and the conscious act of the victim. But for juveniles, this provision is not available. So name of the child, or her identity is not to be disclosed even if the authorization is given by the next of the kin or not given. So victim of an unsound mind might suffer from trauma, which is unimaginable. This was the view of Honorable Supreme Court. So they said that they have view that it is not necessary to disclose the identity of the victim to arouse the public opinion or sentiment. So serious issues dealing with victims with such in his sexual offenses and need to be dealt with sensitively. Even in the cases of a survivor who dies due to this assault, the so same rule was applied that the identity should not be revealed as such. Only in cases where it is an unknown person and the police official suspect there is a sexual assault. So in such cases, without giving the details of the offense, the photograph of the person can be put in the media or get the identification. So that could be the way, because even in the dead, the dignity has to be maintained. So there were a number of cases which used this same rule of protecting the privacy of the sexual survivor. So Honorable Court decreed that even in the judgment by the courts, the name of the victim should not be mentioned in the judgment because that can also be used. And of course, these judgments, they will not be made on the public, available on the public court. Only the copy will be available after the due permission of the courts. So this all views were in the Nipun Saxena versus Union of India, where to summarize, we can say that no person can print or publish any details of the victim 
in case the dead victim or unsound mind is there the authorization of next of kin unless permitted by a competent authority and firs they should not be made on public domain police officials they should keep the documents under sealed cover they should not be available they should use pseudonym the authority to which the name or the victim is disclosed they are again duty bound to protect the identity in case of minor under pocso disclosure of identity can only be permitted by special court <clears throat> and for this we had a procedure adopted in our hospital so in present scenario to protect the identity of such victim uh, both minor as well as adult the uh, sops were prepared by a committee which was constituted and this has been followed uh, for all the sexual survivors coming to our casualty so what is done is that at the time of admission the patient reports usually to the emergency medical officer so on getting the history from the uh, patient of a sexual assault the same person will not be registered under any name a pseudonym x y z or abc will be given without noting down any details of that patient so that observation file is made in a pseudonym then this survivor is sent to the oscc that is one stop crisis center we have a separate section which is adjacent to the gynecology ward so this patient or the survivor is sent to this oscc where rest of the examination is done by the gynecologist so all the treatment all the medical legal examination all the sample collection and counseling that will be done by the doctor on duty of department and gynae of ox so doctor at oscc will take a copy of identity proof for the first time there and this can be a aadhar card or a voter card of the survivor and if that survivor is a minor and doesn't have this id proof uh, id proof of the parents can be taken the doctor will verify the original with the photocopy giving date and the time of receipt he will send this copy of the identity proof in a sealed packet to the department where it will be kept under lock and key on the same envelope a cr number the date and time of registration and the pseudonym that has been given to that survivor that will be written so there that name and date and time of sealing of the document and the doctor is also mentioned in this envelope the same doctor will also send another copy of the same identity proof in a sealed packet to the mrd department under receipt and this again is kept under safe custody uh, of the mrd under lock and key where the only authorized person can access this under lock book entry so safe custody of this document is the responsibility of the doctor who is examining and the department so document preserved is used in the case if some difficulty later on Arise, uh, arise due to linking of the identity of the person who has been examined with the case or the actual survivor in the later case of judicial trial in case the survivor need admission the file is also made under same pseudonym so throughout this hospital stay the file will be in the custody of the nursing staff of the ward and in case the notes are to be put the file will be given by the nursing staff to the doctor and again it will be returned to the nursing staff who will keep it under custody so all investigation requested and sent to the different departments in the hospital will be under pseudonym and cr number so these two will not help in identification of that survivor no department in the hospital will ask for any other details of such patient nor will preserve any information which can lead to potentially leading to the identification of such victims so even on the discharge slip no identity identifying data is mentioned sometimes the scenario is different the patient may get admitted with the vague history and later on reveals that later on reveals that this was a case of sexual assault on her 
So in such cases, the um, file made under the name of the victim is sent back to the MRD and the, all the uh, investigating forms, they are called back from various departments and the new file under pseudonym that is made. The rest of the procedure is same for which we have discussed in new admission. Same is for the minor male survivors under POXO. So only change would be the document regarding the identification will be collected and verified by the EMO instead of OBS and Gynae department. So instead of OBS and Gynae department, the document in a sealed packet will be sent to the forensic and medicine and toxicology department and the MRD. Rest procedure will be safe. So till now we have found that this is one of the best way to prevent the uh, or preserving the identity of such survivor and in its strict ad adherence with the various laws that have mandated. These are my references. Thank you very much.